So, with our sister reunited with us for, I think, a second or third time, and with our first clear idea of some means to get out of the village, I think it's time to go ahead and head to where those memos mention, which is up to the Karahai Shrine. Wait! Sadly, Mayu, we can't wait around for too long as the random ghost encounters seem to increase the further along we get into the game. And we don't have to head too far, as the Koraha Shrine is that shrine we visited back in Chapter 2 all the way up on the hill. Neo, my leg hurts. It aches. You may also recall, though, that the, men the memo, or the notebooks we found before, also mentioned the large tree over here. And it does seem like our viewfinder is reacting to something at the tree. Good news is that, is that, as per usual, we don't have to go too far to unlock this ghostly lock. You may recall that shrine is right up in the Kurahai Shrine. And we needed to head up there either way, so we might as well make our way up there. As we do get up here, we get another visit from Masumi. This is more or less a second chance to grab that vanishing ghost, in case you didn't, earlier on in Chapter 2. Otherwise, though, there are no new items waiting out here, so we can safely go inside the shrine and see if we can't take a picture of that altar. In addition to the altar itself, there are a few new items that have spawned in the shrine. First though, we might as well go ahead and take a picture of the altar here. And it gives us a look at Yai and Sai heading behind the broken lattice. Might as well go ahead and investigate back there, especially since it looks like there is an item waiting for us back there. We have an item waiting for here as well. Another entry from Manakata. Seems that he has found the same thing that Masumi found in regards to a hidden passageway located underneath the village. But. That doesn't mean that we are without a fight inside the shrine. We run into another fight with the Veiled Priest. Nothing too new here. And in fact, if we had gotten unlucky earlier back in Chapter 2, we would have had a very similar fight back then. Good news is, is that, as per usual, with Mayu in tow, we can use her as a bit of a distraction. though it's for the best just to use your zero shot and take him down as quickly as possible. We have better things to do than to fight the same ghost we've fought many times before. make me realize though that I maybe should have kept to a stronger film. Maybe just to have to make this go a little bit quicker, but the good news is that I'm at least 
a little bit good at uh, getting the fatal frames. defeated, he does leave behind a little goodie, which is a radio stone and a spirit orb, which we have absolutely no use for. But we can go ahead and listen to that radio stone we just got. Maybe it'll shed some light on the thought process of this particular veiled priest. We killed her. That can never be undone. This was doomed from the beginning. We should have let them both go. Sigh as well. And the first real hint of dissension amongst the inner ranks of the, uh, the sect here does make one kind of wonder if maybe something was just amiss with the Kurosawa father. But we can finally go ahead and gather up this item waiting for us. It's another vial of sacred water. In addition to that, you might recall this door that I brought attention to earlier. And this might just be that passageway that uh, Monikata, or the folklorist, was talking about. Either way, we just have one more item to quickly pick up. It's just another spirit orb. But that's all we need to do right now in the shrine, so it's right back to the tree we go. But before we can head to the tree, we do get a surprise attack from a Veiled Priest yet again. Which is why I am designed to speed this up as... There is no difference whatsoever in this fight and it... I don't know, it just kind of shows one of the weak points of the game and that... Even though the enemies can be interesting the first couple of times, by the time you fight them for about the fifth or sixth time, depending on your random encounters, can become very tedious, especially depending on which enemy you're fighting. The more passive ones, or the woman in the box, can take quite a bit of time. And what makes it even worse is that that veiled priest wasn't even nice enough to leave us behind any items. Inside the tree. Poor Itsuki. It's our fault. So, so inside the tree? Seems that Mayu has fainted. Poor Itsuki. It's our fault. 
Tell fault. Keeps muttering about poor Tsuki. Inside of that, though, we find ourselves surrounded by monuments and pinwheels. We did see a pinwheel outside, but we don't actually know the meaning just yet. Our main point of interest, though, is this familiar looking mechanism here. Looks a lot like the pinwheel setup we saw back in the Osaka house. And this is what we are going to need to solve for this particular chapter. In addition to that, we do get an octagon key. And something seems to be reacting on the shrine. Nothing too informative, just informing us that, well, we need to get those pinwheel crests. No idea where they are for right now, though. Also, it seems like Mayu is giving off a weird aura. And she gives us a real hint as to where we need to go. Such cryptic clues. I wonder what they could mean. Alright, well, the, the clues really aren't so cryptic, but, well, before we can fully follow up with those, we do need to head to the storehouse, but we do have a document to read before that. Yet again, just going into the fact that twins play an important part in the ritual, but the interesting part here is that the Elder is actually the second-born and not the first-born. As to what that will factor into for the rest of the story is... I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. For right now, though, we do have a bit of backtrack to do, as we have to head all the way to the storehouse. And normally, we do have something of a shortcut where we could actually go out the other hole in the tree to lead us back into the cemetery. But there is a somewhat important reason to go out this side of the tree instead. I will say, though, that this particular chapter is something of one of the weaker chapters, especially considering the fact that we've already gotten two chapters of padding. This one, in turn, is a lot of backtracking and not a whole lot of new content. In fact, at this point in the game, we have covered I'd say about 99% of the entire map. Itsuki. Festival. I want to meet you again. Don't 
our fault. And even at this point, the vanishing ghosts have almost gone into repetition. We have caught a ghost called Storehouse Bound before in almost the exact same location. But there are some new vanishing ghosts, such as these roaming doll legs. We did catch a pair earlier back in the Kurosawa house, but still not exactly sure what that's supposed to be referencing. But with our new octagon key, we no longer have to go around back. We can now go straight into the front of the storehouse. And we can finally meet Itsuki. Sadly, there is no meeting at Suki. We just find out what ended up becoming of him in the end. Before we head into the cell, though, we do have some Type Zero film to pick up. But it's now time to enter into the cell and find out the sad end of Itsuki. Now from that cutscene, uh, obviously we were able to piece together the fact that he hung himself. But there are a few documents waiting inside of his cell here, adorned with his kimonos. His very long, worn out, and dilapidated kimonos. And these documents paint a little bit more of a picture in regards to the mindset of Itsuki. Now, obviously, we already know that he called his friend Manakata to come into the village to get him some help. But what we don't realize is that a lot of what he did was, well, to make sure that Yai and Sai didn't have to go through what he had to go through. And maybe this radio stone will shed some more light on that. like the other ghost we have run into, he's stuck in something of an emotional loop where his final strongest emotions have kept him trapped. You can also find some more diaries from him here. Going further and further into that, he kind of realizes here that his friend Manakata, getting such a generous welcome can only mean that he's going to be turned into the Kasabi. And here he has one last final idea for Yai and Sai to get out of the village. All he has to do is find the hidden crest in the three different houses. But we do know how that ended up. Still, we can use his wealth of knowledge here in this map to get another piece of the puzzle in regards to finding where these hidden crests are. I guess, I guess this is useful in case you didn't wait around to hear Mayu's hints. But that's all we need in here, and we're never going to be hearing from Itsuki for the rest of the game. 
For now, though, we are going to head straight over to the Osaka house to get the first crest. You may recall from the hint that it did mention a woman in a box, and we are very familiar with that particular enemy. And the good news is that we don't have to head too far into the Osaka house to get there. It's right over here in the kimono room. We also get some Type 14 film to make up for all that wasted film on the Veiled Priest. Too overly surprising. Guess what's in the box? Well, it's the woman in the box. Except for some reason this time she's accompanied by a child's crying. I'm not sure if it was some backstory that they just decide to leave out with her being a mother, maybe looking for her young. But the woman in the box is the woman in the box that we've fought many, many times before. The only real difference here is that she has a little bit more health, but I mean, we've already fought her in this exact same location, and we do have a more powered up camera, so pretty trivial fight. Made only minorly difficult by the fact we can't get that third fatal frame in, but... Kind of have to challenge yourself at this point. <laughs> but with the woman in the box now defeated, we can now finally get the Osaka Crest we came after. But that is not the end of the Osaka House for right now, and in fact, we have something of a little side quest to do before we leave. First things first though, we are going to switch to the Type 90 film for a very, very difficult Vanishing Ghost to capture. So as we head out into the hearth room here, we get visited by a familiar trio. And just barely, even with the Type 90 film, you have just enough time to get all three of those running children. And each one of them is a separate entry into the spirit list, so... Well, if you're looking to complete the spirit list, you are going to need to capture all three of them. And I cannot overstate how, how difficult that is. But with their childlike voices echoing through the house, it's now time to go ahead and play a little bit of hide-and-seek with them. They aren't too, too difficult to find, especially considering how few rooms there are in the Osaka house. First one is hidden behind the kimono here. You might actually recall all the way back in chapter 2 that we did find a hidden ghost behind the kimono here. 
and this is where that all comes together. In addition to that, the girl ghost that was hiding behind the kimono did leave behind a radio stone. So we might as well go ahead and give that a quick listen. Nothing too much to garner from that, except a little bit of sympathy for those poor, poor children. And there is one more item that we do want to go ahead and pick up while we're up here on the second floor, which is a little bottle of sacred water. Now the one real difficulty in capturing these children is mostly due to their weird positioning. As you saw there with the girl behind the kimono, she was about to disappear right as we were just walking into the room. So the one thing to keep in mind is that the children won't fully disappear until you look at them. So. You kind of have to take advantage of the situation and capture them through places you normally wouldn't think you could. Such as through that little uh, screen there. But that's all we needed to do in here. We just have one more of the trio to catch. And the final child is going to be located in the back room. Quite possibly one of the trickiest of the trio to get, but if you take advantage of the situation and photograph him through the wall, it's not too difficult. You do want to be careful though in rushing over if you do want to take a picture of him straight on, as once you get out onto the porch here, it does trigger another vanishing ghost. Yeah, the latest arms can be Pretty tricky considering they don't really set off your viewfinder, but they are worth quite a bit of points. And also where the final child was hiding is another radio stone. So, with all three children found, hopefully that will allow their spirits to end their endless game of hide-and-seek. And considering we don't really hear their voices anymore, I, I guess that did the trick. We got a, a few more vanishing ghosts, and I would say that's a successful side quest done. the side quest isn't actually done at all. No, merely finding the kids was just the first part, and the final part is going to be fighting them again. 
Yeah, if you did not fight them in that optional fight back in the Kurosawa house, this would be your first run in with them, and. I can't really say that the hearth room is a good place to fight them. They have plenty of places to hide and ambush you in this particular room. And if you don't know a good way to set up the camera angle, such as what I've gotten here, you're going to be having a lot of trouble. I will say though that this entire situation is completely optional but I would highly recommend doing it, as there is an additional reward for doing it. If anything though, just do not be greedy, especially if you know that multiple of the kids are rushing at you. Well, if at all possible, try to get a fatal frame in one and Try to dodge the other ones as best you can. In the end though, with a clear head, and the zero shock, you can make pretty short work of them. And then with that, that is all she wrote for the kids playing tag. And we get our reward, which is a new piece for the camera, and a piece we've already been seeing in action. The save function really gives us a large boost to our spirit power that we gain whenever we damage enemies, and that's how we've been able to get so many zero shots in, or pretty much recharge our power back up to full if we get a good three hit combo in with the fatal frame. That concludes all we need to do in the Osaka house. Next, we are going to just edit our way over to the Kiryu house. Now, the hint did specifically mention the sky bridge and the doll that we, we heard about earlier, but much like the Osaka house, there are a few new ghosts to capture and a few little environmental changes, such as I was fairly certain one of those dolls was knocked over before. More importantly though, on New Game Plus, you do want to explore as fully as possible, as there are some easily missed ghosts in the Kiryu house. First hidden ghost that we are going to get is in the doll maker's room here. If we position ourselves just right and aim at the table, we do find a picture of the doll maker himself. That one's not too difficult to miss, but. In the adjoining room, you may recall that there was a family altar room. And there is a much more difficult to find hidden ghost in there. Over by these family pictures here, if we move in a little bit. find a mysterious photo woman. Perhaps it was the frozen woman we found earlier, or perhaps it was the woman trapped in the rubble, or perhaps it was the fallen woman. The flavor text on the picture really doesn't describe it very well, but who knows. There are just so many mysteries about the Kiryu family. But our next destination is going to be the twins room. Let's 
nothing really in the way of hitting ghost in here, just an item to quickly pick up. And a nice little Easter egg. That ball... I hate to admit it, but it did scare me the first time I was playing through. I had no idea it was coming, just really caught me off guard. But, if you recall one of the closets where we got one of the doll pieces to unlock the earth bridge, there is a hidden ghost waiting in there for us. And this hidden ghost is... one of the otter ones, I should say. In that, Fatal Frame 2, or Artemco, to be more specific, ran a bit of a contest with some video game magazine editors, and they got themselves, or their likeness, put into the game as hidden ghosts. I don't really know offhand what magazines they all work for. I, I think I do know one offhand, but any, any hidden ghost you might be seeing in this update that has a semi-American name is going to be from a video game editor. Or video game magazine editor, I should say. But we are just about done collecting the hidden away ghosts of Kiryu House. We just have one more waiting up here probably know who this might be for. What if we go to the broken railway here? Railing, I should. Uh, if we look downwards, we do find a picture of the fallen woman. But now we can make a little quick shortcut over to where we need to actually go. Which is right over to where we found the stun lens. We find one of the ghostly twins waiting to greet us. And if we take a quick picture of her, we do get a hint as to where we need to go. Now, the hint might not be terribly clear, but... Well, if you use the map and the hint you got from Mayu and that picture, it's... Eh, pretty easy to figure out where you need to go. For that, though, we might as well go ahead and pick up more Type 14 film. Especially after that fight we had with the kids playing tag, but... We could have investigated this wall earlier on in the game, but it would not have rotated for us, as it will now. This doesn't seem like a trap. And... Uh, I guess it wasn't a trap. So the first step in this fight is to not fight in this very tiny room. Even though it might initially seem like the door is locked, that's just a tiny bit of a trick. Otherwise, this is 
A very similar fight that we had with the twins earlier. I would say though that this arena that we're fighting in can be a bit difficult, mostly due to the camera angle. But yet again, with the use of the zero lens and probably a stronger type of film, this is not a difficult fight in the least. And just like that, we are two crests down, one more to go. But don't rush out of the Kiryu house just yet. There is one more hidden ghost right here in this broken paper window. And it's another lovely video game magazine editor. Now our final destination to get the final crest is going to be all the way up in the All Gods Village Cemetery. But while we are on this side of the village, we're actually going to go ahead and capture two more hidden away ghosts. First one is very close by. It's right under the sky bridge. It's what I assume to be the broken neck woman. The next hidden away ghost is going to be on the Whisper Bridge heading to the Kurosawa house. You may recall that we picked up an herbal medicine on the side of the bridge here. We do have a hidden ghost waiting in the water. But it is not the drowned woman again. Instead, it is yet another video game magazine editor. They just really, really seem to get quite a few of those in the game. But with that out of the way, it's on to the All Gods Village. Or, the cemetery. Before we head all the way up there though, what you know, there is another hidden ghost just off to the side of the road here. And no, it is not this trio, they just decide to be an annoyance to say the least. Yeah, out of all the ghosts in the game, I can honestly say that this trio is Probably the most frustrating and the least fun to fight. Their constant passive behavior, their annoying flanking AI, and just the fact that their fatal frames are really, really annoying to get makes fighting these guys just a pain. An endless, endless pain. Like I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, if we look over to the closed storehouse window, we do find a hidden ghost. And it is another picture of Sai, I assume, assume talking to Itsuki. But on to the cemetery. can already see that our viewfinder is reacting to something. Good news is that, as we have seen before, the cemetery is extremely small, so it really shouldn't be too difficult to find out where that crest is. Also, in case you missed this vanishing ghost earlier, you do get a second chance to get her. Also, there aren't any new items up here. It's just for this particular save file. I 
didn't get these earlier, so we, we have heard that radio stone before. recall from our initial visit there was this odd shrine in the back here that now seems to be reacting to our camera it shows us a tombstone nearby now in case you were wondering if you needed to be able to read Japanese or if you had to click on every tombstone individually don't worry the game isn't that cruel to you once you get near the right tombstone it will immediately react that does look like the tombstone we're already looking at but I don't recognize Oh, that makes more sense. Yeah, just another fight with an enemy that we have struck down mightily before. The only real difference here is the fact that... I didn't realize it before, but I think there is an invisible wall that locks you into the cemetery until you finish off the broken-necked woman. bad news for her is she has a very large fatal frame opportunity and we have a zero lens. So as we have seen with the twins and the kids playing tag and well, the veiled priest, a lot of the challenge in the game has pretty much been eliminated by our powering up our camera. assume that's why they don't give you too much of the powered up film considering that just your normal camera alone with pretty much the baseline film is enough to take down most of the ghosts in the game very easily. the broken necked woman eliminated. We can now go back to the shrine that was closed off before. And inside we find our final crest. And the good news is that well, the tree we need to go into is right next to the cemetery. And hopefully whatever is waiting locked in that shrine will be our ticket out of the village finally. Poor Ituki. It's our fault. And even better, Mayu is still where we left her. But we've seen this puzzle before. Not too too difficult made a little bit more difficult here but easily enough solved It's our fault. Mayu. No matter what happens, I'll forgive you. Stand up. We're almost home.
can get out of this village. That is right. The exit is very close by, but I'll have to wait for next time in the final chapter of Fatal Frame 2.